I've seen several videos covering the Starfield factions. This is going to be a different approach than what you've probably already seen, and I'll explain that here in just a minute. Like many Bethesda games, Starfield will be chocked full of history and lore with all kinds of ways to connect with its world and systems. Being an open world sandbox, Starfield will offer a backdrop of culture and interesting groups to engage your curiosity and promote exploration. In this video, we're going to do a deep dive on the faction system in Starfield. Here are nine secrets about Starfield factions you need to know. And I would definitely stick around for number one as it could affect your first playthrough. Welcome to Starfield Signal, your place for everything Starfield. I am your host, Luke Woodward. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get started. Secret number nine, the major factions. There are five major factions that we know about so far through all of the gameplay videos and interviews Bethesda has published to this point. These consist of the United Colonies, the Free Star Collective, Ryujin Industries, the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet, and of course our favorite explorers, Constellation. Now there are other groups that might technically be considered factions, but they've only been mentioned briefly or not at all, which makes me think they are designed more to fill out the RPG systems in the game as opposed to contributing to any kind of storyline. These consist of the Ecliptic Mercenaries, Violent Spacers, the Religious Zealots of House Varun, House of the Enlightened, and the Sanctum Universum. I wanted to say parenthetically, this video is most likely a part one, as of now we just don't have a ton of info on each of these factions. As marketing for Starfield ramps up and we start getting more information, I'll revisit the topic with updates and more specifics about the individual factions. You'll notice moving forward, this list is more focused on the gameplay elements of the faction system, and that's what I referred to earlier when I said it would be different. Secret number eight, faction headquarters. Some factions are connected to specific locations. The United Colonies and Constellation are headquartered in New Atlantis, and the Free Star Collective has their capital in Aquila City. Neon is home to the Megacorp Ryujin Industries, and I would imagine would have some interesting side quests related to one of the religious groups since Neon is identified as a pleasure city. And through a neat little Easter egg, we get a hint that the Pirates of the Crimson Fleet once stuck to the outer parts of the settled systems, mainly causing problems for the Free Star Rangers, but now they're actually becoming more aggressive and operating within the United Colonies systems. I thought this was a pretty cool Easter egg they put in their videos for us to uncover. Keep up the good work, Emil. Secret number seven, faction stories. The part of the gameplay reveal video that features most of the factions is referred to as the stories in Starfield. While we still don't know much about these stories, we do know that most if not all of the proper main and side story content is tied to the factions and the characters you meet in them. Now of course there will still be other minor stories told through random quests that we get along our journey, but the big and memorable story beats in the game will most likely be told through the factions. For a game as big as Starfield, I actually really like this concept. This ensures that if you're really interested in the big stories that Starfield has to offer, you know exactly where to find them. You don't have to worry about missing a major plot point found in the back of a cave on some volcano-laden planet at the edge of the settled systems. Secret number six, faction exclusivity. Will Shin, the lead quest designer of Starfield, shared some interesting thoughts in one of the Constellation Question interviews when asked if the player would be locked out of some factions after joining others. Here is how Will responded. We also discussed really early on, like, okay, do we, do we make some of the factions in conflict with each other? And we decided, you know, we really want to make sure that you can play through all the faction lines uh, independently of each other. So it seems that none of the factions are exclusive. You will be able to join all of them in a single playthrough if you wish. I love that they've thought about this from the player's perspective. Sure, most players who are interested in the factions will most likely have multiple characters and multiple playthroughs, but it's nice you don't have to wait another 30 hours of a complete playthrough just to see what a new faction is like. Secret number five, connecting storylines. Now that we know we'll be able to join any and all of the factions, and considering the factions are what will drive the main story content of the game, it's interesting to wonder if any of these stories will overlap or join together in unique ways. In one of the promotional videos, Made for Wanderers, the lead designer said this. The cool thing about Crimson Fleet, you know, what if you're 
good person and you want to be a good player and you don't want to play as a bad guy, you can side with the pirates or you can report back your superiors and be like basically space cop type of thing. So it lets you be a good person and still play with the bad guys. I think that's really cool too. I think this is really neat. Knowing how their players love freedom, Bethesda has allowed some space here for a nuanced playthrough, where you can still work through the Crimson Fleet's morally compromised storyline, but still play as a good character. This makes me wonder what other kinds of situations we might encounter where two factions' values are at odds. Maybe this is foreshadowing for secrets three and two on our list. Secret number four, faction roles. Unlike the factions or guilds in past games, you won't necessarily be working through the faction quest to ultimately be promoted to lead each faction. Rather, you'll be given an opportunity to influence the direction and values of the faction. Will Shen, again, offers an example of this. And this time around, we were like, no, we really want the stories to be a little more personal, right? You're influencing the direction of where this faction is going to go. So say the politics of the Free Star Rangers, right? You know, what's more important? Is it justice or industry, right? Where are you going to try to nudge them in this direction or another? So you don't necessarily end up as the head of every single faction of the game. I actually really like this change. Sure, it's cool to move up the ranks and eventually become the leader of a group. I mean, who wouldn't want the perks of being the leader of the Thieves Guild, right? But after you've completed all of those quests and you're leading the group, there's no one else left to actually give you quest or keep the group interesting. So I'm hoping this is an answer to that problem and they'll use their procedural quest system in conjunction with the factions to have an endless amount of quest for you. Sure, they won't have big story beats, but it's better than nothing and will hopefully be a good way to score some big credits to build that fleet of spaceships you've been dreaming about. If you are excited about Starfield and enjoying the video so far, I would love for you to subscribe and join us on our Starfield journey. If you're tired of clickbait or negativity towards the game, this is a great place for you. Secret number three, Faction Companions. We're not entirely sure how many companions you'll have in the game or what their full capabilities will be, but we do know that some of the factions will offer companion characters for the player. Specifically, we know that Constellation will have multiple companions available. Here's another segment from Will Shen's interview. The companions along the uh, Constellation storyline, which is the main quest, they'll have a lot of opinions and uh, points of view about what the decisions you'll be making along the main storyline. We've also added in several times where you can ask them to speak for you. So cool. you might have a companion with you and, and you'll be challenged to someone will tell you you can't get through here and you can actually you know, turn to your companion and say, hey, actually, could you handle this? And they'll actually speak on your behalf and there could be consequences, uh, good or bad, for what they happen to say. So it seems that not only will you have companions from some of the factions, but depending on which companions you choose to bring with you on quest, that could alter the outcome of some of your missions. I think this is a great game design choice. It adds another layer of freedom and with all of the different combinations of companions to choose from, this adds a ton of replayability even within the main quest line. Secret number two, faction consequences. As we've seen in other Bethesda games, we could assume that in gameplay, it's possible for your companions to get injured or even die. But the writers alluded that some of your decisions may also have repercussions for who makes it to the end of your journey with you. So they'll have opinions about whether they're good or bad, you know, and for a few of the storylines, and including the main quest, who ends up with you at the end, right? You know, there are some, you'll be determining the fates sometimes whether someone lives or dies or whether someone's still in the, in the faction or decides to leave the faction. This leads me to believe there will be major story decisions that get you kicked out of certain factions if you don't support their agendas along the way. This definitely adds some weight to your decisions throughout the game. With the amount of dialogue reported to be in the game, I imagine our companions are going to be much more fleshed out as characters. It's possible we might really connect with a certain character from a faction, but ultimately make decisions that alienate them from us. One piece of evidence for this is what Todd Howard said about a deeper relationship system in an interview with Lex Friedman. We wanted one where, okay, we can be in a relationship and yeah. um, we've committed to each other in some way, but I just did something that really made you angry. 
And as opposed to just drifting out of that status, you're in a temporary, I don't like what you did state. Before we get to secret number one, if you are enjoying this video, click or tap that like button for us. That'll tell YouTube to keep you up to date with more Starfield news, and it'll help us connect with more people who are excited for the game. Thanks so much. Finally, secret number one, faction rewards. While you have the freedom to join or not join any of the factions, there are some decisions made in your character creation process that may prove useful in certain factions. In the character creator, we see in the gameplay reveal video, we come to the traits of your character. Here we see different options, but the traits that will affect your major faction playthroughs are Freestar Collective Settler, Neon Street Rat, and United Colonies Native. The only description we get to see is that of Neon Street Rat. For the perks, you get extra rewards for the missions you complete on Neon. This will be especially helpful for the Ryujin Industries faction questline, and while I'm sure your faction quest will take you off-world, it's nice to know you'll be gaining extra rewards for the majority of those faction quests. However, like Todd Howard mentioned, there are disadvantages to each of these traits. For this one, we see that your crime bounty with other factions will be greatly increased. And this is kind of a bonus secret, because this lets us know that within the factions, there is a bounty system. So I imagine that if you commit crimes against the United Colonies, this will not only put a bounty on your player, but it might even affect your status with that specific faction. Keep in mind though, that the developers didn't want to restrict your access to any of the factions or their quest lines. So even if you do get a bounty, there must be ways to pay that off or remove that status so that you can continue in that faction's quest line. These were our nine secrets you need to know about Starfield Factions. Which ones did you already know? Again, we hope to follow up with a part two about factions as more info becomes available, so be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you won't miss it. Thanks so much for watching and sharing our excitement for Starfield. We look forward to seeing you in the next video. For now, may you find wonder as you journey through the stars.